style it is driving and finished. So here it is. The style kit is done. Uh, it's all up and running. We had a few little issues here and there. Um, I didn't film much previously because I kind of did little bits and pieces in between other jobs. But we are now all done. All our piping's done, our radiator's all in, all the plumbing's done. Um, we had a few little clamps that we had to fix. Yeah, it's all good and running and ready to go for a tune. Uh, so it's the only thing really left to do. So you can see turbo in its final place, which is perfect. And we've got our water feed lines here that run around to factory fittings. We've got our oil feed. This is one of the most difficult parts. We spent ages trying to find a banjo fitting that would fit. And we've gone with this and as you can see, there is not much clearance. But the positive being, it's very close, but the engine will twist this way on acceleration. So it's okay. Same we, um, I don't know if I can see down there. So we had a clearance issue uh, behind the braided line. You can see that metal pipe just there. We had a clearance issue from the cooler piping silicon joiner to that's the actual oil drain. So we switched up the piping a little bit and you can see it there. We turned it from two and a half to two inch early so you could put a straight joiner on and get that clearance uh, so that's all we have to modify on that piping and that worked good and you can see down there uh wait there we are there's our oil feed with an inline filter on a nice little bracket worked out lucky and the piping that was already in the car worked fine so uh lucas who owns the car, we just got him to paint and he painted it up just to make it look fresh again. And we swapped on a nice new silicon joiner there. The next issue was the radiator and clearance. So you can see right down there how close the dump is to the fan shroud. Now, this fan shroud we've already modified. We pulled, it was all the way out here and we had to chop it down to there. Got it re-welded. Um, for more clearance if you look from this angle you can see uh, we've got the gold heat tape on there to help keep some of the heat off the radiator uh, Lucas also got in and heat taped around the fan down there and we did another small modification we actually repositioned the battery so the battery used to be here and what we did is we found a hole back further, twisted it around, and then you can see down here, we made a little bracket to reposition the tray more. And then it turned out that we could fit back the factory overflow and everything fit with the piping and all that. So yeah, a few little clearance problems that we had to work through, um, but overall, pretty good like we've made it work the car's actually been test driven already and nothing touches nothing fouls um yeah so it's actually really really good on the first test drive we had a couple little problems this hose here came flying off when it was on boost and this is actually connected to the ecu as the boost sensor um and then we had an issue after that, so we fixed that up. After that, the idle was running high. Couldn't work out why. So um, I started testing a couple of things, trying to find leaks and stuff, couldn't find anything. Uh, Lucas came and helped again with his car. Uh, he pulled off the idle control valve, which is here, and cleaned it all out, and it was filthy. Uh, then cleaned the throttle body, and then we put, um, one of those new on upper engine cleaning spray things through cleaned it all out it got slightly better after that but we still couldn't find why the idle all of a sudden went up to two grand and i was like i was a bit stuck and i said to lucas like look apart from tune i can't find anything yet but 
We'll put it on the hoist and I want to check the back side of the motor. It's the only place I haven't checked yet um, and I can't really get to it. So we had a look down there and found there's two vacuum lines that go from this little air rail that's connected to the idle control valve to the steering rack. And I've since found out that they go to a sensor so that it'll bump the idle up when there's load on the rack when it's at idle. So instead of sitting at normal idle, it'll bump it up so then the power steering assists a bit more and the steering's light while you're not actually moving. One of those lines had blown off. <laughs> so we wrestled in a very tiny hole here that we don't really fit in. Got it back on. As soon as we connected it back on, started up, the idle was back to normal. So we, um, we put the car on the hoist and we put new clamps on it and everything and now it's been for a drive since and it's yeah it's perfect it boosts perfectly that was a simple but a little bit hard to find fix because i didn't even know there was a system that put manifold air to a steering rack super weird so we went through a lot of little problems um after the coilovers went in we had the wheel touching and we tried a bunch of stuff and we ended up having to raise the car a little bit just to get that done um, once that was done. No more clearance issues. Front to back ride height is almost even uh, within a couple mil. So that was something simple that we did. But yeah, engine wise, that manifold kit went on perfect um, after some small little modifications. And it really was only because the turbo we put on wasn't the step the factory turbo like that kit's designed for you to have a high flow factory turbo and we and lucas used a different turbo because it was considerably cheaper um but works just as efficiently if not better um and then the clearance for the radiator was purely because uh we went with a thicker core radiator if we went with a thinner core radiator none of the clearance issues would have been a problem but a thicker core means better cooling, so it's not, it's definitely worthwhile doing. So I guess now you need to hear it start. There we go. Idle's super smooth. But the coolest bit of the car is when you rev. It doses well. So that's the Starlet all done. Um, it was actually really fun to work on. I'd love to do more stuff with these. Uh, Lucas is, all he has left is Tune, which he's gonna book in. Uh, for Roadworthy, there's one other issue that we found. The horn doesn't work, and for some reason it's got positive to both wires, and I, I can't work out why. So I just told him, book it in with the auto elect, and they'll fix it up. It probably won't take long. Um, we're going to get Lucas to go for a drive, and we'll film that and chuck that in. But yeah, that's all. So we'll uh, find something new to build on the next one. Catch it.